What? Uh, with uh, Stein's pitcher and Stein's first baseman uh, slash de designated hitter, Todd Rapp, Chris Coral, Todd Rappin. Guys, how you doing tonight? All right, how you doing? No tricking on the setters. All right, so uh, first uh, we'll go off uh, today's uh, the day before the big game. Uh, Chris, you got any jitters for tomorrow? Few, you know, regular pregame jitters. What about you, Rap? Nah, yeah. Rap, you, you guys been through this stuff before. What? What's your secret going into the uh, game? <laughs> uh, you know, not to think too much about the game. Let your mind be free before you get there, and uh, just let your uh, instincts take over. I have ice in these things, you know. Uh, Chris Coral, Todd Rapley. Todd, uh, you've been uh, this whole year, Todd. You've been sitting the bench most of the year. Uh, can I can I ask why? Oh, uh, I, that's. Uh, Something that the uh, manager decided to do with me. Uh, you know, I, I do whatever I have to do. I'm not happy about it. I well, very openly stated I wasn't happy about it. Well, explain why you're having one of the uh, terrorists, you know, having the best season of your uh, short career. I don't know, you know, I just try to do whatever I can. I can't explain why I do but it's, People think uh, sometimes you don't try, but some. some Sometimes you make out, sometimes you, you think the kick and ass has helped the uh, new Todd oh, Rapley? Yep. Yep. Uh, Chris, let me ask you a question. Uh, this year, lately you've been, uh, you get knocked sometimes on your pitching. You were, you were once the veteran pitcher for seven years, and, and a Jaime comes in, he's a good pitcher now. Now now people start to question your pitching. What does that do to a, a psyche of a, of a starting pitcher? Well, it was, uh, I was a position, I thought I filled well. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Rob's a good pitcher, though. You know, I'm not knocking Rob. Rob has better control than I, than I do. And uh, he pitches differently, and sometimes it's good to mix things up. I like to, to think of myself still as the number one pitcher on the team just because I've been doing it for a long time. And uh, Rob's our outfielder. But I think it's good to shake things up once in a while because it's the way it works. Uh, Let me ask you guys a question. This is a year of... Uh, this year has been... Uh, a weird year with some of your new guys and some of your veterans and say guys like Dave Messino who's kind of drifted away from the team, guys like Mike Cooper who kind of drifted away from the team. As veterans and captains, what what do you do pre-game warm-ups? How do you get this team together? Oh, you know, it's funny because uh, last year I wasn't too much of a part of the team, the year before that I wasn't too much, and now this year uh, I am uh, too much of the ever was in the beginning of uh, the beginning of years. And, uh, you know, People are grown men. They're not gonna. They're gonna do what they want to do. You can't uh, tell somebody to, to, to uh, be part of the team. They want to be part of the team. You just you know, hope that they're mature enough to separate uh, game time from uh, the other. I agree. Right. Yeah. I, uh, we've been trying to get the team together more this summer. I think than uh, than more or less than in the past. I think we're trying to start to blend together more than just a team, but as friends too. And uh, we hang out before the game, hang out after the game, and, uh, you know, try to get the general core of the team together. And, uh, you know, I guess it's an added bonus when we get, you know, the few that, that we don't see too often. Because it's, uh, we have a good time together, not just on the field, but off. What about Anthony Crow this year? The only guy that really has been having trouble that's kind of dissed himself from, from the team. Uh, what do you guys do on Sunday morning with Anthony Carrillo? What are you going to do tomorrow morning if he gives the team an attitude again? How do you deal with situations like that? Uh, as, as a team captain, I guess it's my uh, position to, to, uh, to say something to him to make part of the team. But again, he's uh, a grown man. You can't, you can't lead somebody who does not want to be led. It's, it's, if he wants to take the attitude that he the attitude that he's taking, there's nothing I can do about it or anyone else. Can do. Ten thousand people in the world telling what he's doing, and he's still not having a So just hope he plays good, and that's it. Chris, you have come from yeah, Todd's right. You know, I mean, Anthony is, is a, a grown man now, and I mean, we, we can't hold him by the hand and, and tell him, you know, he's got to do this and he's got to do that. He wants to be part of the team. He's got to play like a team member, and. Uh, if he doesn't want to, then maybe he's just not, you know, part of his team, and therefore that may be what 
what results in the future. But for now, he is. And he's got to come down with as good an attitude as anybody else because we got a big game ahead of us. Uh, there was a press conference that should be scheduled for tomorrow afternoon that uh, has Ray Coyne stepping down in the fall, and it uh, looks like Chris Coro is uh, coming in as manager. Rap, uh, you've had your problems with Chris in the past. Uh, what's is it anything going to be different? Yeah, I've never had the problems. I don't like to exaggerate. Uh, make something more than it is. Uh, I play for a uh, It's not a uniform. What is my annual play for? You know, I'll go out there and give 100% no matter what anyone says. Okay, what about you, Chris? You have any jitters coming in? You know, you haven't managed in three years, and when you did, you, you, you took over a tough team and in a tough arena, and you had some problems. This is your first outdoor job. What's your feeling on that? Well, it's, uh, we're more established now. we got guys who have played ball for a while. Um, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be tough because... We're going to have to get in some new guys who haven't played with us because we got a few guys going away. But uh, I'm looking forward to it. And, uh, you know, we're dealing with Todd. You know, we got, there's the old Todd and the new Todd. And right now, I think we see the new Todd. And uh, I'm hoping I get the new Todd, too. And I'm hoping I get his position. Well, you, you just suggested <laughs> you're going to make some changes. Uh, what kind of changes are you going to make? Uh, well, no, I'm not going to, you're not going to see anybody get cut. What about Anthony Carrillo? Well, all right, Mr. Wilson <laughs> get cut. Well, I think Anthony Carell is going to cut himself. I, uh, uh, from what I understand, he's been saying in the press that he doesn't plan on coming back to the Giants. And uh, what have you done? I don't know if the Giants are going to take him back. I have to talk it over and uh, think about my, uh, you know, what objectives I can go by. But uh, as of now, unless Anthony Carell can can show me something tomorrow that makes him, that makes me think that he wants to be a stallion. It's not that he's it, having a bad season, just that he doesn't. It, yeah, it has not, I don't think Ray is a manager. We've never gone off on people because mm -hmm. they can't hit or they, they can't field. But when you, when you come down and you don't want to play, I mean, you know coming onto this team that we want to go out there and win. If you want to go out there to have a good time, we want to do that. But if that's all you want to do, then this yeah. may not be the team. We want to go out there and win. And to us, winning is having a good time. And uh, I don't know what he was told before he came in, but, you know, if he wants to play another position besides catching, that's uh, nothing that uh, anyone, any one of us can do about it. He was told to catch, and he has to catch. I mean, if he doesn't want to catch, right? I think you feel the same. But uh, when I when I put on the standing uniform, I feel pride. Right. And uh, if you can't feel pride in that, the first thing I was told when I came to this team is the world is we, really not I. It was the family. We were together. And that's what the Stallions is. There's still a family within the Stallions? Yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, if I can uh, establish this with, you know, 30 years down the road, 40 years down the road when our kids are, you know, then that's something I look forward to. Look forward to something I want to uh, work towards, you know? Okay, we're joined here by a uh, manager right now, Ray Coyne. Uh, Ray, uh, you have uh, a lot of decisions to make this year. What to do with uh, veteran Todd Rapley, what to do with Anthony Carella. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about that, first of all. Uh, what helped you make your decision? Did uh, Chris uh, play any role in that decision, or Mike Cooper? No, I, I, you know, a lot of decisions I make is mostly a team decision. Todd, Todd had, a, had some problems last year with us, and I think Todd's going to kick in the ass. And that's exactly uh, <laughs> exactly what we did to him, and I think it's helped him out a lot. And uh, you look at his average right now, he's batting one of the highest in the team, and uh, he's been doing what's been said, asked of him. As far as Anthony, it was more of a decision I had to make as far as the, putting the best fielders in the team, and that's what I did. I put the best fielders in the field, and Anthony's best spot was the catch. Uh, he was told this before the season started. He was told if he wanted to. He could look for other teams and join with them, but he chose to stay. And I lived up to my bargain. He was the catcher, and he's, been, he's not too happy about it. There's nothing I can do about it. Well, let me ask you, as a manager, you've been manager for a while now. When people uh, second guess you, people talk about you behind your back and, and question you. Does, does it hurt? Does it take a, Does it does it take a toll on you emotionally? It, it does. It, sometimes it does. A lot of managing things that I've done this year has taken a toll. That's why I'm stepping down. Did you, you ever just feel like you just want to play and that's it? Let go of the whole yeah, thing? Yeah, a lot of times I do. Going down there, making the line. I mean, 
Making a lineup is not as easy. Yeah, it's easy. You punch a little lineup, you tell people what to feel, but it's not just that. It's a lot of other things. It's getting people together. It's having 11 guys like you. And when and that's, that doesn't happen. 11 guys are not going to like you. And if the team gets the wall and you have to bat somebody 11, they're not going to like you for it. They're not going to agree with you. And that's where I get some slack. And uh, sometimes I just want to be part of the team and part of, you know, arguing what the manager does. And uh, that's why I'm stepping down after this year. I can relax and let somebody else do it. Let somebody else put up with this. Now, Chris, how are you going to, when you manage, you've managed before, how do, how do you uh, deal with something like that? Do you take advice from uh, Ray Coyne? Or? Well, I already used to. If someone says uh, Chris is a bad manager, how, how, do, you, how do you react? Well, Hypothetical uh, question. That's everybody's decision. You know, if somebody says I'm a, I'm a bad pitcher, I'm a bad hitter, that's, that's everybody's opinion. You know, I mean, same with Matt. That's, that's an opinion, and, you know, it's not going to, it hurts because you want everybody to like you, but I guess it's not going to happen. But, uh, with them, I mean, he's basically the same ground as, as Ray started off with. I'm not going to, you know, bring outfielders into the infield and fielders out into the outfield. It's going to stay basically the same because things have worked, you know. Just, uh, a couple of changes that more have to be made instead of rewinding. Let me ask you, bo uh, both of you. Uh, now you have 11 different people on the team, 11 different egos, 11 different minds. Now how does a manager uh, deal with 11 different people, 11 different mind, egos at once? Well, you gotta. You have to pamper one person. You have to no, you light a fire under another person. What do you? What, what is? Well, you gotta take the individual itself and tell them we're all looking for a common goal. And, uh, you gotta tell them what their role is, and, and if they want to do it, they want to do it. And I think everybody knows what their role is. You know, we gotta play as a team and, and do what we have to do to win. And I think that's what's happening. But, uh, there's a lot of egos on this team, but a lot of egos they get together. And when you're winning, a lot of things happen. And when you're losing, a lot of other things happen. But uh, lately, we've been winning some ball games, and uh, things have been going good for us. And I think we're established. We're a great team now. Everybody knows where their position is. They know what their position in the lineup is, and uh, they know how to win some softball games. And that's basically what uh, I do. I'm going to ask you real quick, Ray. Uh, you've been playing first base this season. Uh, in your heart, do you feel you're a better first baseman than the veteran Todd Rampley? Oh, I'll say no, Todd. I think Todd's been more experienced than I am. I'm, I'm still a learner at, at first base. Uh, I think there's some qualities I'm better than, than Todd, and I think there's some qualities that Todd's better than me at. Um, but it's, Todd's been down there a long time, you know, too. And uh, this is my first year down there. And so, to answer your question, no, not yet. But, uh, I, I like first base, and uh, I like playing them. So what's going to happen? Now, Chris, you have a big decision. What's going to happen in the future for you? Who will be your first baseman in, in, in the fall? I, um, I say I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I got a tough decision between Todd and Ray. Well, fortunately, uh, fortunately for me, I can, I've been in outfield. I've been playing outfield for a long time. And, you know, when, when it comes down to it, I have to step down and go back to the outfield. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's still up to the management, but... Uh, you know, when you got guys like Todd coming in, I, I played my year at first, and that's what I do. I play my league at first, and I can play outfield too, and that's where I'll probably end up playing. Let me ask you very quick, uh, very both of you, uh, uh, you know, Chris, you can answer first. We heard uh, Todd Rapley talk about what a stallion is to him. What, what is a stallion to you? You've been on this team as long as everyone. Sum it up real quick. What, what is a stallion? A stallion is somebody who comes out become part of a, a team, not just an individual, but a team, and, and they're one-tenth and one-eleventh, not, you know, more than that, not less than that, and uh, just somebody who wants to win, somebody who wants to play their butt off for, what, two and a half hours, be with us for two and a half hours, and... So how, how does it affect you when uh, Michael Cooper, or Dave Messino, well, I don't, don't, don't want to be part of the team. People sitting elsewhere besides on the bench um, during games. I think that for those that period of time that we ask of of you, uh, you should be sitting with us as a team. If you don't want to be with us, don't play with us. And you know, I mean. You have all your, your private time to be with anybody else you want to sit with the bench, whether it be girlfriend, 
brother, you know, next door neighbor, whoever the hell it is, it doesn't matter. It's just at that point in time, when we we have to be in between the white lines. You come and be with us. All right. What is the standing to wake one? I agree with Chris. It, uh, you know, as far as Sunday mornings, you play once a week. Uh, we're a very competitive team. You know, come down and play like it. You come down, you sit on the bench, and, and you play with us. Uh, yes, yes, but that's not the question, Ray. What is the standing? If I had a nickel for every time I answer this question, I'd be a very rich person. Uh, what is the standing? Uh, player that comes down that gives you 100% and uh, does what he's asked to do. And that's what a standing is. Okay, uh, we'll be back in a minute. Oh, with Todd Rapley and Ray Coyne. Uh, guys, you guys are considered the, the twin towers of the team. Uh, good friends for years. Uh, where one went, the other one went. Yet there are problems many times when it deals with, with decisions being made on the team. Todd, let's go with you first. How does the personal relationship conflict with the game field relationship? Well, uh, it's sometimes very hard to separate the two, to be honest with you. I mean, they're saying to me, listen, whatever, they're trying to make it nothing to do with our friendship, but, I mean, uh, you're only human, of course, that's going to uh, affect you, but it, it's not the, uh, whatever decision we make, uh, usually is the best one for the team. Yeah, you know, I give them a hard time, but, you know, that's, uh, well, people are, uh, have a relationship like me and Ray had, but we can, uh, we can do that. We can, we can fight. We can yell at each other. We can call each other what we want, but the worst things in the world against uh, you know, one of those things in front That's, that's uh, all right for me. That's a good relationship. Ray, what about yourself? How does it feel to have to make decisions on, on a good friend of yours, deciding to, to DH him or deciding to even ask him to leave for, for a season? How does that, how hard is that for you? Yeah, a lot of times it's hard, but lately I've been looking at a point of view where uh, we're a team now and we've got to throw the personal side away and we're at a point in time where we have to reach a certain goal which is to win a lot of ball games. And now, unfor you know, fortunately for us now, we're, we're very competitive, we like to win, we've got to put the best team out there and I've got to throw a lot of personal things out the window and, and go as best for the team. And uh, shaping up people's attitudes is part of my job, and I, and I, I think I've done a good job with him in the last year. Uh, he's, he's, uh, he's, he knows what we look for, and uh, he knows we're not playing games anymore, and he's lived up to his expectations this year. He's done what he has to do. Uh, as far as last year, a lot, a lot of things, you know, hot and cold here and there. I think everything's been, we squared everything up, and uh, I don't think we're going to have any problems anymore. God. Your game has improved dramatically this year. Some people say it's just because of yourself. Some people say it's because of the discipline that you've received. Would you say this discipline has improved your game at all this season? Uh, definitely. Yeah, it, let me tell you, it helps a lot that uh, you know, someone, that someone that cares about you, know, that they want you to do well, that they don't want to see you do better. I mean, uh, Ray took me aside and said, uh, very bluntly, uh, he wanted to do well. He needs to do well, he says. He goes, uh, I'm not gonna. Have, I'm not gonna. Uh, I want more crybabies on the team. I don't want none of this. But the bottom line was he wanted me to do well, and, and that helped. And that helped a lot because uh, you know if I if I know someone, uh, let me. Uh, half of this in this game, if you believe you can do it, I think you can do it. That's the confidence, momentum. Confidence is the biggest thing in this game. If you believe that you can do it, you can do it. And it, it, and if someone gives you that confidence, it feels like. You know, your team manager, your, your close friend, and then, then you know, you know, it helps a lot. You, you think you can do it. And, uh, no, that's helped a lot. I think it's helped a lot. You know. It's an act. I said this before to Ray, and I'll say it again. It's an act of love to give someone a, a, a kick in the ass. And uh, you know, that's what he did. And that helped a lot. I, I owe a lot to, uh, to my season, to, to, to Ray Point. A lot to this game. You know, that's something uh, I'm proud to say. I'm not going to deny. Ray. People criticized you when you made Todd your first round choice, your first pick. Um, they said that he was a solid ball player with, with a bad attitude, and yet he seems to, or at least as of late, gone against the odds. Looking back on it now, would you say you regret making him as your first round pick? No, no, not at all. Because what we started in the beginning, way back in 88, 
could never replace. I think the memories we had back then were a lot of fun. I think building a, a team, building a championship team, you need many different characters and to have many different many different egos on a team. You know, you see every championship team. You don't see a team that's, that has one straight attitude to win a championship. You need a bunch of characters to, to shape up the team, especially when a team's down, uh, you're down and, and you're losing at a, at a certain low point in the season. You need somebody to bring you up. And I think many times Todd has brought this team up, many things he has done. And believe it or not, a lot of things, when he, when he takes it on the field, he takes it on the field most of the time. And he does what he has to do. He comes up with his clutch hits here and there. And, uh, and when the team's down, he says something to bring us up. So no, no, no regrets here. Uh, I think what I've built and what we've built together as a team, uh, people are jealous. And you can tell this year how jealous they are. And we are the team to beat. Right, looking at this season, uh, I think you guys expected to do better, uh, could have done better, didn't think that you would need to win two games to make the playoffs. What are, well both of you can answer this, what are some of the pluses and minuses that occur during this season? Uh, that's a hard question to answer. Uh, a lot of pluses, uh, I mean, uh, let me tell you, uh, this is a team, I've been on this team for seven years now. This year, I can honestly say that uh, this has been a, a team more than any other team I've played on. The last year, the year before even, or, or even 1991 when we won 14 in a row, that, that wasn't a team. That was uh, guys who went to the game and, and they left. It wasn't a team. Right? Uh, this is a team that, that, that sticks together and hangs out after the games and that, that, uh, you know, plays well together and, and, and we want to be a uh, part of this team. I mean, uh, And that's uh, that's a real big plus. It's minus is that because you win, we'll lose seven games. You know, all we have to do is win these two games, and all the on us, and that's fair enough for us. And all we gotta do is win two games. We don't have to rely on anyone else. And if we lose two games, then it's our own fault. We're going to win. We look at it, and for a team like we are, and, and the pluses this year, you have to go with guys like Heimick. Casino, who's having a great season, and Todd is having a great season. Um, you got to look at guys like, you know, Dan, too. A lot of negatives. I, I think the biggest negative is team automatically thought that we'd be in the playoffs. And I think that's, we didn't take a lot of games as serious as we could. Now our backs are against the wall, and you're going to see the two teams come out. You know, I think we're going to we're gonna prove how good we are, and we're going to win two games tomorrow. Um, you know, they, like Todd said, they'll race the whole season. It's not a bad season. 10-8, and, and we have to we're in a great, a great division. So, and you look at the games, we beat every team in this division, and we beat them hard, and we beat them. We just take a while to do it, and we take our sweet edge time. And uh, now, now we have to do it. We can't say, oh, we lose, we have no chance. No, if we lose, we're out. That's why I think this team is, yeah, it's one of the best teams I've been on. It's the most team that's been we gelled together as one now, and uh, just like we were last summer when we finished the season nine and six, or nine and whatever, we finished very close to 500. We had to win the final two games to make the playoffs, and we did. Once we got in the playoffs, we killed every other team, and we won the championship, and that was like one of the best teams I saw. And I think this team is even better, and they're going to show their character tomorrow. There's been some problems with the team this year. Um, Anthony Corella has been a name looming around with problems. Uh, certain problems with people being devoted to the team. Uh, people having personal problems off the field that seem to have, have hurt their playing ability. Would you describe this season as being a disappointment partly to all these problems that have occurred and why all of a sudden are all these problems stemming up? Well, the one problem we have with Anthony, I think it's good that this team is, is I think, 100% behind me and it makes it easier on me to make decisions. Unfortunately for Anthony Crowley, he's been given a job assignment which he doesn't like and uh, he doesn't want to do it anymore, but he's living it. He's got to finish the season, he knows that. 
I'm not happy that I can't do anything about everything else that stems up uh, as far as Dave and Mike and I don't think it has much to do with on field performance. I think Dave is having a great year and you can tell. So I don't think that's affecting him and Coop Coop's hot and cold, uh, I don't know if, if psychologically maybe he's, he's thinking about other things at times and George at times he's George is not really in it and he's something and I was something in it. Some things do stem, some things don't. But uh, no, I don't think the problems really have to go between that. I think we've won games as a team and we've lost many games with this as a team. And we, you, you can come up with a thousand excuses why we lost. And uh, you know, we just didn't win at that time. And I think everybody gave it 100 percent. We just didn't win. You know, I don't know what it was. A lot of times this year, but it has, I don't think it has anything to do with uh, outside problems. Todd, um, you seem disappointed, not outwardly, but you can see sometimes in the inner with the DH role, uh, you feel with the season you're having maybe up a spot or two in the batting order. Is it tough for you to go with day in and day out feeling that you feel underappreciated? Well, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, uh, a lot of times I do feel No one likes the DH, no one likes to sit on the bench. I mean, I was, uh, I was before that, uh, six years, seven years before that, I was out there every game playing uh, first base. And now I have to uh, DH, but uh, that's something that uh, me and Ray uh, agreed to. Uh, something that uh, we, signed, we signed to, and uh, now I have to learn to. Uh, you know, as soon as the whole, you know, I just hope that, uh, as far as being unappreciated, I, I hope, that uh, you know, my teammates do see what I do for this team, and uh, that I am, I can help this team. With, uh, I, I can uh, do some quality at bats and get some quality hits for this team. And, uh, you know, as long as they see that, I'm happy. I don't, I don't need someone to tell me, uh, oh, I'm, I'm great on this. I just, it's nice once in a while to get that, but if, if I don't, I'm not going to worry about it. But, uh, you know, for each year, one more question. Um, where do you see both yourselves and the Stallions, let's say, 10, 15 years down the road, maybe even 20 years down the road? Do you see yourselves with the Stallions, the core of the team together, the team becoming a dominating team? Where, where do you each see yourselves and the team? Well, I see this team in 20 years. I think this team will be together for a long time, way over 20 years. Uh, not, you know, you're going to see 20 years from now, you're going to be like, who, who are these players? Who are, you know, just like you would seven years ago, saying, who are these players right now? Uh, you're going to see the core. You're going to, I think, you'll see Todd, you'll see Chris. Uh, you'll probably see Rob, maybe George. But I think that's it. I think the rest of the team will not be around. Uh, maybe, I, you know, a couple of people here and there. I think we'll pick up a lot of people in the future. I think every year we get better. Or we get more talented every year. And uh, we get farther in tournaments now. I think in 20 years from now, we'll be considered one of the elite and so forth. And uh, it will be great because we'll have then 25 years experience. We'll know everything about the game, not that we did already. And, uh, you know, we're young. We're 20. The average age is 20, 21 years old. And here we are. We're in the thick of things. Every year, we won three out of the last four championships. Uh, we're a team to be reckoned with. And, hey, we're still young guys. And uh, waiting three, four years from now, we're going to be... Not that we are already. Yeah, I see your opinion. Todd, your opinion? Uh, you know, if you think about uh, uh, what we accomplished already, the first year we started, we were uh, we had some stars and Now we're uh, we're a team that everybody um, everybody wants to be part of. I mean, uh, we just got people calling, calling from all over the place to to, to, to play on this team. And, uh, I mean, that, that's uh, something that uh, that we had to work up to. I think we'll be together for a long time. I, I think a lot of us will be together. I mean, uh, you know, I think uh, me, Chris, and, uh, and Ray have uh, been together on this team since the day one. You know? And I think we will, you know, very long with Rob Heinrich. And I think we will uh, be together for a long time. And uh, that's something that uh, would be uh, very nice to see all of us together. We'll a lot more change. Great. Thanks, guys.